Breaking news that's coming in at the top of the star. BJP Punjab in charge. Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat has made an explosive claim. Union Minister points finger at the Congress top leadership over Prime Minister Security Labs. Shekhawat blames Congress leadership over Prime Minister Security Labs. Listen in to this exclusive conversation with Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. प्रधानमंत्री की सुरक्षा में जो चूक हुई उसको लेकर जो पंजाब के मुख्यमंत्री हैं चरणजीत सिंह चन्नी उन्होंने कल आज तक से बातचीत करते हुए कहा है कि कोई चूक नहीं हुई रास्ते के क्लियरेंस दी गई थी इसको भी कोई अस्वीकार नहीं कर सकता रास्ता क्लियर करना और सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइड करना ये एज पर ब्लू बुक जो है स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का दायित्व था इसको भी कोई इंकार नहीं कर सकता मुझे लगता है कि चीज़ें सब स्पष्ट हैं पंजाब की सरकार और सरकार जिनके इशारों पर काम कर रही थी वो कांग्रेस आलाकमान इस पाप के बोध से कभी मुक्त नहीं हो पाएंगे देश की नज़रों में देश की जनता सामान्य मानवी के नज़रों में प्रधानमंत्री जैसी संस्था और जिस देश ने दो दो प्रधानमंत्री इस तरह से खोए हैं उस देश की जनता कभी इस कृत्य के लिए माफ़ तो नहीं करेगी चन्नी ये भी कह रहे हैं कि उन्होंने इस घटना के बाद प्रधानमंत्री से संपर्क साधने की कोशिश की है प्रधानमंत्री उनके फोन पर नहीं आ रहे हैं ये सब चीजें जो है इस पूरी घटनाक्रम को आप प्रारंभ से लेकर के अंत तक प्रधानमंत्री जी का कार्यक्रम जो तय हुआ उस तय तिथि से लेकर के आज तक अगर आप सब एक इन टोटैलिटी अगर आप देखेंगे तो ही हम जो है इसको पूरे को समझ पाएंगे कि किस तरह से एक षड्यंत्र रचा गया किस तरह से जो है प्रधानमंत्री जी के वहाँ रैली स्थल पर न पहुँचे इसकी व्यवस्था की गई किस तरह से प्रधानमंत्री जी की वो रैली सफल न हो उसकी चर्चा जो है वो चर्चा की गई क्या आपको लगता है कि पंजाब की जो स्थिति है इस वक्त उसमें फ्री एंड फेयर चुनाव हो सकते हैं देखिए ये तय करना जो है ये इलेक्शन कमीशन का काम है और क्योंकि अब ये सारा विषय जो है ये जांच का विषय है सब्जिडाइज हो गया है माननीय सर्वोच्च न्यायालय ने इसका संज्ञान लिया है तो मुझे लगता है कि अब इन सब विषयों पर टिप्पणी करना वो अनुकूल नहीं होगा क्या आपको लगता है राष्ट्रपति शासन लगना चाहिए जैसा मैंने कहा कि ये सब अब सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जब विचाराधीन है उसके बारे में इन सब विषयों पर टिप्पणी करने की आवश्यकता नहीं है लेकिन ये तय है कि प्रधानमंत्री जी की सुरक्षा में चूक हुई ये तय है कि जानबूझ करके ऐसा किया गया ये रचा गया कि वो किसी तरह से वहाँ न पहुँच पाएँ शहीदों का मत्था टेक करके अपनी श्रद्धांजलि इस आज़ादी के अमृत महोत्सव के समय में न दे पाएँ पंजाब के लोगों को जो सौगात वो देना चाहते थे वो न दे पाएँ कई तरह के राजनीतिक भय और आकांक्षाएं शायद उनको इसके लिए प्रेरित कर रही थी रोक रही थी मजबूर कर रही थी Right, you heard Gajendra Singh Shekhawat there make a very serious charge that there was a planned conspiracy to stop the Prime Minister from proceeding with his program in Punjab on the day in Firozpur, and it was all happening under the instructions of the Congress High Command. Now, two days after a serious breach happened in Prime Minister Modi's security in Punjab's Firozpur, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta told the Supreme Court bench today that the banned organisation seeks for justice made a public call for action against. Against the Prime Minister during his Punjab visit, the Solicitor General further said that this could potentially be an incident of international terrorism. In fact, the Solicitor General argued that the inquiry into the PM security breach case should not be investigated by the state. monitored inquiry the state set up inquiry committee and that it was a deliberate attempt in fact to overreach the judicial process the solicitor general has argued that the presence of an noa officer is absolutely necessary the bench was headed by chief justice nb ramanna justice surya kant and justice seema kohli the pil seeks accountability and a court monitored inquiry into the security arrangements by the punjab police it also seeks measures to ensure that such lapses never happen in the future the solicitor general's claims come after seek for justice chief gurpatwan singh pannu made some provocative remarks ahead of the prime minister's visit to punjab he said that punjab citizens must protest against prime minister modi and that they must not listen to the government he also said that the protesters must show a shoe and they would be handed out 1 lakh dollars 5 january nu desh punjab de vich aake vote mang reha tade to 
ਇਸ ਦਾ ਵਿਰੋਧ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈਣਾ ਦੇਸ਼ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਵਾਲਿਓ ਵਿਰੋਧ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈਣਾ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦਾ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਤੇ ਕਿਸਾਨ ਭਾਰਤੀ ਹਕੂਮਤ ਦੀ ਈਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੰਨਦਾ 5 ਜਨਵਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਚਾਹੇ ਕੋਈ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਚਾਹੇ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰ ਹੈ ਚਾਹੇ ਹੈ ਹਸਪਤਾਲ ਦਾ ਕਰਮਚਾਰੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜੁੱਤੀ ਵਿਖਾਓ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਤੇ 1 ਲੱਖ ਡਾਲਰ My colleague Anisha Mathur is now joining me live on the story Anisha as far as the center's demand is concerned that there should be a court monitored inquiry because the state can't be trusted to conduct an independent inquiry into what happened because the center believes that it was a lapse on the part of the state government and officials of the state government and the state police because of which the prime minister's security was in fact breached and his security was compromised could there be the possibility of a court monitored inquiry Well, Paul, we will have to see how this entire drama is going to play out in the Supreme Court on Monday. Remember today's petition was by a group uh, uh, an NGO called Lawyers Voice which said that this was a shocking breach of security that action should be taken under the SPG Act against the responsible officials who allowed this kind of lapse to occur that there uh, that there should be strict action to ensure that something like this does not happen again. in the petition the center also made certain explosive comments solicitor general had raised the allegation that this could be some sort of a planned international terrorism uh, terror plot that there could there were lapses according to the solicitor general by the punjab police that the dgp should not have given a green light to the prime minister's convoy uh, for taking that particular route that the police personnel who were deployed on the route instead of warning the pm convoy uh, did not do their job that is what the center has said and at the moment they have also said that the probe that has been set up by the state government is not correct because uh, the center's objection is that the home secretary who is part of this particular probe committee could also be the subject of inquiry depending on what uh comes out later at the at the same time the punjab government has raised objections to the inquiry set up by the central government which also includes the uh, dg uh, which includes the ig of the spg saying right. that the, uh, the spg which was responsible so a lot of political blame game right currently going on but the court has asked the uh, as the registrar general of the high court to take into custody all the documentation and communication relating to that day and the prime minister's travel so that an inquiry can be conducted into what exactly happened that day right anisha thank you so much for sharing all of those details with us the center hinted at an international terror conspiracy pointing fingers at a band outfit called in fact seek for justice the center names khalistani group seeks for justice in the supreme court number 3 the punjab government claims that the spg didn't follow police advice that's a very serious charge which has been leveled take away number 4 the center and the state have no faith in each other's probe clearly the blame game continues a take away number 5 the supreme court has sought the prime minister's punjab travel records to be preserved by the registrar general of the punjab high court Now India today has accessed an exclusive video which shows a clear lapse in Prime Minister Modi's security the new video shows protesters on the flyover blocking Prime Minister Modi's convoy the pm was stuck amid those protests for 20 minutes at a location which is just 10 kilometers from the Pakistan border but the war efforts between the punjab government and the center continues the punjab government has claimed that the pm's route was changed at the last minute The center has said that the Punjab government was informed of the route change. Punjab Chief Minister Charanjit Chani claimed that protesters were removed from the route early in the morning. The center has claimed that Punjab government allowed protesters on the flyover. Now the probe into Prime Minister Modi's security breach has intensified. MHA team is at the spot and taking top stock of the situation MHA officials have also summoned Punjab DGP Siddharth Chattopadhyay to Firozpur along with 13 other police officials of different ranks an FIR has been registered in the case sources have told India today that the center could use the SPG act against Punjab police officers and summon them to Delhi for the alleged security lapse center is mulling action against erring punjab officials under provisions of the spg act 
the state police is responsible in the sense of you know having to keep the route open once the pm has decided it's the responsibility of the uh, state police to keep the route open uh, normally uh, we've seen that when the pm travels there is always a what we call as a pilot uh, vehicles of the state police travel 1 km ahead of the uh, pm's convoy and if that pilot vehicle uh sees this blockade they radio you back the second is uh, the keeping of the prime minister on the flyover for 15 20 minutes exposed uh, is a definitely a lapse on the part of the spg uh the, the, the should moment the blockade was seen and the, within us literally 30 seconds uh, a minute they should have whisked away the prime minister from there to uh, safe house uh, which is would have been already designated so who exactly compromised prime minister modi's security in punjab's ferozpur that inquiry now in fact has intensified the mha formed a three member panel yesterday which in fact reached the spot of the breach took stock of the situation and has also summoned punjab dgp siddharth chatopadhyay to ferozpur along with 13 other police officials of different ranks also the chief secretary of punjab has informed the center that an fir has been registered in the case now the center is mulling the possibility of using the spg act against punjab police officials and summoning them to delhi for alleged security lap now this could be like i said under the provisions of the spg act according to sources who've spoken to india today opinion is being taken if officers can be acted against section 14 against under section 14 of the spg act section 14 in fact deals with the responsibility of states for the prime minister's security center's action could entail summoning officials to delhi punjab chief secretary has also sent a report about the sequence of events to the center according to sources the report mentions that extra manpower was deployed in the wake of protests which were happening across punjab ahead of prime minister modi's visit now the protests have been referred to as spontaneous in that report oh minister amit shah has meanwhile set up a three member panel like i said to probe the lapses which led to uh, prime minister modi's convoy being stuck on a flyover for 20 minutes the panel comprises of secretary of security at the cabinet secretariat sudhir saxena is leading that panel along with joint director ib balbir singh and spg ig s suresh My colleague Lalit Sharma is now joining me live on the story. Lalit, we do know that the Supreme Court has suggested to both the center and the state government that they should in fact uh, not proceed further with taking any sort of action in their respective inquiries up until Monday when the hearing is to happen again. But can you tell us what is the current status of the investigation uh, that the state is uh, conducting because the center we know the center's team and the pro panel is already on the ground has reached the breach spot has summoned punjab police officials including dgp siddharth chotopadhyay uh definitely if we just talk about uh, uh, between the center and the state the ugly words of uh, words are being exchanging and uh, uh presently if we talk about the status now the mha officials who have reached firozpur in punjab have now summoned up dgp of punjab siddhar chatopadhyay with uh, 13 other senior officials of punjab police uh, including dc of firozpur and batinda and uh, if we just overall talk about in the exchange of words now uh, it seems that both the center and the bjp is putting the whole blame game on the uh, congress and the chennai government but if you talk about uh, from the punjab government side now already yesterday the four uh, important members which included uh, cm chalanjit singh chennai home minister sukhjinder singh randhawa the chief secretary and the uh, home secretary had a meeting high level meeting and late night uh, the mha query which have been sent by regarding the security lapse in which now they have submitted a report in which very clearly they have said that extra police officials have been Were deployed and looking into the whole situation absolutely absolutely so we'll wait to see how that inquiry proceeds further the state inquiry the chief secretary as lalit was already pointing out has submitted a report said extra manpower was deployed and the protests were quote unquote spontaneous lalit thank you so much for joining us with
Now, as India witnesses a surge in COVID-19 cases across the country, here are the number of cases of the Omicron variant found in India. Maharashtra has seen, in fact, 876 cases. Delhi has seen 465 cases. Kerala has seen 284 cases. Karnataka has seen 333 cases. Rajasthan has seen 291 cases. These are the states which are, in fact, accountable for the maximum number of Omicron cases across the country, the total of which stands at 3,007 cases at the moment. Now, India Today exclusively spoke to Professor of IIT Kanpur, Manindra Agarwal, about the surge in COVID-19 cases across the nation. He claimed that the third COVID wave could peak by January end. Here's more. Professor Manindra Agarwal, thank you so much for your time here. I want to begin by asking you that more than one lakh cases are being reported in India already. Uh, there is a visible surge. Uh, it's for all of us to see. And a lot has been said about how this could just be uh, are not very accurate numbers, so the actual numbers could be much more. Having said that, if more than one lakh cases is not our peak, what really would be India's peak? What would be the scenario in major cities in weeks and days to come? What are your findings? Do share with us. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, the data coming about Omicron cases in India is still in very early days because even in Mumbai where it started perhaps the earliest we only have about 10 days data so uh, we have a model which looks at the data and then estimates the parameter values and then computes the prediction based on that so for most of the places our model is doesn't have enough data to be able to make such projections mm. having said that we have done some preliminary analysis and what this indicates is the following, that uh, in cities like uh, Delhi, Mumbai, where the numbers have been rising very fast for past week or so, they will continue to rise very sharply with the peak estimated somewhere around middle of this month. That is in about a week, 10 days from now. Uh, okay. And this is a typical characteristic of any wave that rises very fast, that it peaks fast and again comes down quite fast. Okay. For India, we are still a little bit in the dark because, as I said, then insufficient data is available at present. But uh, very preliminary estimates indicate that the peak will be somewhere between 4 to 8 lakh cases per day. Somewhere around... For the entire country? For the entire country, somewhere around the end of this month, give or take a week. Okay. 